We're not gonna do that because we know that we can add them back in and we just overwrote the context file. <laughs> oh no. store data between runs of our application, we're going to go ahead and use Python's built-in file handler to write all of our people objects into a file. And then we will go ahead and load that file each time we run the program, if it exists. Uh, if it doesn't exist, then this means it's our first time running the program, and then there's nothing to load. So we're going to need to be able to handle that case where the file doesn't exist. All right, right here before our code executes, we're going to do the part where we write all of the people into the file. So, all right. Save it into a CSV file. And we're going to create a contact manager using the with open file and we are writing to this as F. And now that we have this contact manager to go ahead and write all of our contacts out into that file, we will loop through our contacts again. And then we'll use a formatted string to write that line into the file. So to do that, we'll use the uh, for contact in contacts. And then we'll use the f.write method and use a formatted string. And then we'll look up the properties of each contact. So first, Contact last, contact dot age, and contact dot phone number. This should go ahead and create that context.csv file for us. Um, write all of the contacts properties into that line by line with commas separating them. So this will serialize this data into that file and allow us to easily deserialize it back out using the same formatting used when we wrote it. Let's go ahead and see that this creates our context.csv file for us after we add in a few people. So we'll go ahead and keep entering John. <laughs> uh, we'll give him a real phone number this time since this should actually uh, save for us. And then we'll enter his girlfriend Jane his wife, Jane. <laughs> Again, give her a new phone number. Uh, let's enter Steve Stone. Just give him a random phone number. And then this time when we quit the program, we should see on the left side here uh, that the CSV file ends up getting created for us. So select option. Thank you for using the address book. Now over here, we can see contacts.csv showed up. Let's go ahead and read this file and we can see uh, John, we see Jane, and then we see Steve. But the problem here is everything's line by line. Uh, we wanted to make each thing on a new line. So to update this, all we need to do is write the new line character here in our f.write file or f.write line. And sadly, we are gonna have to recreate these contacts again for the 17th millionth time. I don't know what this is. <laughs> All right, so let's rerun this and add them back in. Well, we're not going to do that because we know that we can add them back in and we just overwrote the context file. <laughs> oh, no, I wanted to save the old data and then just manually add in the lines. Um, the joys of programming, uh, you'll definitely run into that. All right, let's re-enter them using our program. All right, I've added Jane, John, and Steve again. So let's quit. And we can see our contacts.csv file was updated right in front of our eyes. And now to reuse this data in our program, we simply need to load it in when we run the file. 
And like I mentioned before, this file might not exist. So we'll go ahead and we'll use another part of the standard library to check if this file is here. We'll import the operating system library, which gives us functionality to kind of work with files. And then there's lots of other stuff in the OS library to work with your operating system as well. Uh, but again, we want this specifically for the uh, file path handling. We know we're saving our output into context.csv. We could probably even create a variable for that. But let's go ahead and um, we'll do this right here. If os.path.isFile, this will let us check if this file exists, uh, context.csv. So if this file exists, we're going to load it. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we want to initialize the context list like this. Let's go ahead and read this file again using our built-in file streaming handler that Python gives us using the with open context.csv. Uh, we don't want to try to open a file that doesn't exist because that might give us uh, some memories. Uh, we don't need to actually pass in the second argument into the open method because calling it without it will by default just read the file. Um, and then file is a built-in Python type, so we don't actually want to use that. We'll just call it as f. So f.readLines, this will automatically read all of the lines into a um, <clears throat> list object, CSV list. And the problem with doing this initially is it's going to read in the whole line as a string. So it's going to have the new line character at the end. It's going to have all the commas. We need to parse our line as we read it in so that we can then format it back into our people objects. We'll go ahead and call this read line method, which will give us all the lines in this uh, CSV list object. And then for um, contact line in CSV list, uh, we're going to do two things. We're going to trim off the ending new line character. contact data equals contact line um, and then we'll do a r strip which will get rid of the new line character at the end and then we're going to do a split which will allow us to separate all of the commas that we included into it uh, if you have a friend's name that has a comma in it this isn't going to work very well it's going to be an error case <laughs> Hopefully you don't have any friends' names with commas, otherwise it's gonna get formatted very weird. That's something important to be aware of is what kind of data we're gonna end up working with and how that data will end up affecting our file. Uh, if you do want to be able to support friends that have commas in their name, this would not be the correct way to save their data. Maybe you wanna change your delimiter or just go to a database, which again, much more complicated, but a good exercise to learn uh, for databases. So we'll split this on the commas. This will put the context data into this contact data uh, variable, which will just end up being a list based on where these commas are. So the first part of your list will be Steve. The second part will be Stone. Uh, this will be the third. And this will be the fourth. And we haven't actually talked about indexing on a list, but you can look up each specific one of those values uh, by looking at their specific indexes. So like I just said, there's four values that we're putting into this and that we're reading in and that we're splitting out of the commas to be able to put that back into a person object. Uh, so we'll do contact equals, we'll use our person object here and then we will reference those things that I was just talking about. Uh, the first name is the first value in the list and list are zero indexed. And then so on for the next uh, values that we care about for our class properties. And then Python also doesn't care that much about um, new lines when you're calling arguments. So you can do this. This allows us to keep our entire string length within a visible part of the screen. This will add our split data into our contact here, and then we can add this contact. Actually, no, we still need this. We're not gonna create this in the else. Um, we're just gonna create this above. 
because either way we need this object and we're just gonna append people into it. All right, and then context.append. Contact. All right, so now we have a way to save our contacts when we exit the program and we are reading them in if that CSV file exists when we start the program. This should allow us to maintain our address book over time and add new users and still be able to search and display all of them. Let's go ahead and run this and see if we are loading in our people correctly. It went into our options, which means we got through the initialization code and we should be able to display our contacts and see John, Jane, and Steve still here. Let's go ahead and save a new guy. Uh, this new guy will be Marky Mark. Uh, his age is 36. His phone number is 5155-0000. Now we have John, Jane, Steve, and Marky are all here. Uh, if we exit the program and then reopen the program, uh, Marky should still be here. So we can see all four of them are still here and our program has worked. We've serialized and deserialized the data and we've persisted it between different runs. I hope this has been extremely useful and informative for you guys out there and kind of demonstrating how we persist data and grow programs over time. Uh, if you've liked this, please smash that like button and go ahead and subscribe for more Python tutorials from Be a Python Dev. Thank you. Bye.